welcome to the Oil & Gas Awards 2013. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the nominees. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm welcome to your host for the evening, Pauline Cook. Good evening, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Oil and Gas UK Awards 2013. I'm absolutely delighted and honoured to be invited back tonight to, to uh, host your awards this evening. And what a wonderful video to start the night off, showcasing the industry and, of course, featuring some of our finalists. So you might recognise a few familiar faces in the room tonight. The, UK, the Oil & Gas UK Awards, kindly sponsored by Shell, celebrate the people and businesses which make an exceptional contribution to our industry's success. We have an exciting night ahead with 15 worthy finalists anxiously awaiting the outcome of the awards in the five different categories. And these are the Oil & Gas UK Award for People Development, Business Efficiency, Mentoring, Young Technician of the Year and Overall Excellence. And as you will see in tonight's programme, all the winners will receive a specially commissioned glass trophy from Swedish sculptor Ellen Isaacson. So without further ado, let's get started and please join me in welcoming the Chief Executive of Oil & Gas UK, Mr Malcolm Webb. Thank you, Pauline, uh, and, uh, and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Oil & Gas UK Awards 2013 in this, our 40th anniversary year. I think it's hugely important that we dedicate this evening to acknowledging the achievements of the people in our industry and how fitting it is that we celebrate that here in Aberdeen, uh, the oil and gas capital of Europe. And our industry is not just any old industry. It's one of vital national importance. This industry supports almost half a million jobs right across Britain, almost half of them in Scotland, has now paid over 300 billion pounds, that's three and 11 noughts by the way, 300 billion pounds in production taxes alone to Her Majesty's Treasury. 
and spent well over £500 billion on the UK continental shelf to date. And this year, we will invest an all-time record of £13.5 billion of new capital. No other industrial sector in the UK matches that. Indeed, we've been the largest industrial investor in the UK for each of the last 35 years. And this is just as well. Because oil and gas currently provide about 70% of the UK's total primary energy supply. And as the Department of Energy recently pointed out, that will still be the case in 2030 and beyond. So it's just crucial in terms of our energy security, our national income, and the balance of trade that as much of that demand as possible is supplied from the UK's offshore oil and gas fields. But in addition to that, the supply chain that has grown up here to service this industry is a jewel in the nation's crown. A globally recognized center of excellence in engineering and manufacturing, our supply chain is truly world class. Anyone who says that the UK is finished as an industrial power should come to Aberdeen and then eat their words. But unlocking the full economic potential of UK oil and gas will require both the industry and the government to play their respective parts and to the full. I believe the industry is up and ready for that, and I'm looking forward with eager anticipation to the publication of Sir Ian Wood's interim report to help us both, and importantly the government, appreciate what more we need to do. Of one thing I'm certain, it all comes down to people. In the end, what matters is what we in this room and our colleagues across the industry and across government do. Oil and gas fields will not be found or be developed or produced without the application of the skills of the very fine men and women who we are privileged to have working in our industry. The people are the magic ingredient in all of this, and the stories we'll hear tonight are shining examples of the impact which individuals have. Some of us this evening are here in a state of nervous anticipation, others with some excitement, and as for myself, uh, in some considerable awe of all those we honor this evening. These people are truly some of the best of the very best. And may I say, there are no losers tonight. All the shortlisted candidates for these awards are winners, recognized by their peers and the judges for the excellence of their contribution. So. Before we go further, could I ask actually all of our 15 finalists to please stand? Please don't be modest. Come on, wherever you are, could you please stand? Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, recognize our finalists. Thanks very much indeed. You can sit down now. Almost 40 years ago, I joined a new UK industry which held the promise of an exciting career. Standing in front of old and new friends here tonight, I can attest that so far, I haven't regretted a single day of it. In fact, I've relished it. To have played a part in an industry as important, as professional, as worthy, as decent, and as vital to the nation as this one has been truly a great privilege. And my advice to everyone here, especially those just starting out on their careers, is never to let the good that this industry does slip your mind. You can justly be proud of it. Most simply, but most fundamentally, it improves the quality and the comfort of people's lives. So make the most of every day, and from time to time, step back and celebrate, and particularly do so this evening. And finally, before I uh, hold your evening up any further, let me express my particular thanks to our principal sponsor, Shell. Uh, without Shell's support this evening would just not be possible. And so I now please ask you to welcome Glenn Cady, Shell's upstream director, UK and Ireland, to the stage who is going to say a few words. Thank you very much.
you very much, Malcolm. We did look at the uh, risk assessment on that step there um, and had quite a discussion about it, but it still beats trying to leap up on the stage in one. Um, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it's, uh, it's a great honor and a, and a privilege to add my welcome on behalf of Shell UK as, as the event sponsors. And as you've heard, tonight is our annual celebration of excellence, of innovation, and, a, and of achievement. It's fair to say that there are few, if any, frontiers of human endeavor more universally needed than the success in the energy sector. Affordable, secure, dependable energy underpins the quality of life for everyone. And it's a fundamental requirement for improved living standards across the world. That's our industry. And we do live in extraordinary times. With a supply side rev revolution around unconventional hydrocarbons, turning major importers like the US into exporters, and a revolution on the demand side, where just this month China overtakes the US for importing crude oil. And here in the North Sea, we know a lot about that. We produce 40 billion barrels, and there's some 20 yet to go for. And we have a vital role in the energy future and the economic health of the UK. Across this basin, we're extending the lives of fields, many of which are now past their original design life. In addition to rejuvenating aging facilities, we're now pushing the frontiers, drilling wells four to five kilometers below the seabed, reaching temperatures at the very limit of what we can still measure. With complex geology under huge pressure. And in all this, our absolute imperative, our first priority, is to operate in a safe, secure, and environmentally responsible manner. Collaboration, technology, innovation are all absolutely vital to unlock the ever more challenging barrels that remain. We also need sound, stable government policy to recognize how innovation works. So we have a tax and a regulatory framework which encourages and fosters the innovation and the long-term planning and investments that are required to make this a success. Amongst the many projects that I'm involved in is the decommissioning of the iconic Brentfield. Now, some of the people who we recruited into that team perhaps thought, this is not that glamorous. Well, let me tell you, an engineer came up to me last week and he said, Glenn, I didn't think I'd be on the phone to the Johnson Space Center at NASA developing a new probe to examine the contents of our cells in these huge gravity structures, but that's exactly what we're doing. So right across the industry, we're pushing the bounds of technology of what's possible. And tonight's about the people who are the key to that success. By recognizing excellence and achievement, we encourage and we inspire all. The North Sea has a track record of great firsts, of setting lofty goals and going on to achieve them. The good news is, as you've heard, that investment levels have never been higher. Now that said, there are around a few major projects, and I don't know whether we have any explorers in the room, but they need to get busy, because we do need to fill the front end of that funnel. But we're still attracting great talent, as you'll see tonight. So let's make the most of it and celebrate and enjoy. Thank you. <laughs>